hidden away in a field in the farmlands, you'll come across Bunker 666, with swords pierced into dormant machines. The sounds of a struggle just out of reach. And most frightening of all, What's going on everybody? My name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to Generation Zero. For today we are going to be exploring the mysterious Bunker 666 that has appeared just as of the February update. There is a lot to be said about this creepy little location and I believe that this location is much more than just a set piece. That it possibly will have some serious implications in the game moving forwards. We're going to be talking about what this location has in regards to similarities between it and some locations we've found on Himfall Island. And we're going to be talking about these interesting swords that we can find around this location as well. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about that screaming that's going on just in behind the door here. So buckle up, my dudes, this is going to be a wild ride. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is how this ties into some locations that we've found already across the map. So one of the biggest locations that we can tie to Bunker 666 to make sense of this ridiculousness is the word stick. The word stick has been seen before here in Generation Zero over off at Birtanet Hotel. You can find in room 301 a kind of crazy destroyed scene with stick written on the walls. And honestly, when I found this scene in the first place, I totally wrote it off. I was like, this is just some craziness that, you know, is a nice little set piece, but doesn't probably mean anything. But it turns out that maybe I was wrong, and maybe Stick has a lot more purpose in this game than I thought in the first place. So Stick in Swedish basically means go away or fuck off. It's, it's basically an aggressive way of telling a person to leave a, a location or a scenario. And so, uh, knowing that, and looking at the word stick in the hotel room with the guitar and the handgun, and looking at Bunker 666 with stick written both up on a, a little cross up here, and then on the wall itself, Maybe these locations have something to do with one another. What could Bunker 666 and the room off a of Burtonet Hotel have to do with one another? I'm not entirely sure. But in the room off a of Burtonet, we can find a guitar and a handgun side by side. And possibly the guitar and handgun are remnants left behind off at the Burtonet uh, from whoever is inhabiting this bunker. Whoever is currently fending off a machine or whatever the heck is going on inside of that locked door. Of course, they could be entirely disconnected, but I feel like there is some sort of significance going on here. And this is some sort of a hint from the developers as to what this building's importance is here in Generation Zero. Now we're going to move on to something that I feel is a much stronger tie to a location that we found in the game already. And that being this sword, or more in particular, the hilt of the sword. It's made out of a dumbbell, which is possibly one of the weirdest hilts I've ever seen for a sword in a video game. But outside of that, we found a location already in the game being the underground church off at Himfall Island. And in this underground church, we found a bunch of gym junkies that had passed away uh, wearing a bunch of police uniforms. And around these gym junkies were a bunch of dumbbells. And written on these dumbbells was Iron Church. 
just like the dumbbell that we're finding here attached to this sword. So the Iron Church might even be the name of that underground church that we found in behind the hidden cave. Uh, and I think that that's crazy. I think that that is a, a ridiculous little, little detail that ties the two of these locations together absolutely perfectly. And y'all might be thinking, Tenebris, you're crazy. But seriously, I feel like those uh, dead police officers that were absolute gym junkies somehow made their way over to the mainland or even started at the mainland and were making swords out of the vibra blades that you can find on hunters. Now, the swords themselves might have some significance as well. That being that the one of the biggest requests from the community over the past couple months has been a melee weapon of some sort. And what better melee weapon than the melee weapon that the hunters are using on us? <laughs> and honestly, a sword was the last thought I had in my mind for how melee would function in Generation Zero. But looking at this now and thinking about it, dang... That would be super cool if we could get our hands on a hunter sword of varying qualities from uh, prototype all the way up to apocalypse, attach a freaking dumbbell and go around all medieval on these freaking robots. That would be sick. That would actually be a lot of fun. Um, so this is a potential thing. Maybe it won't span out like this, but I think that this could potentially be a look at what a melee weapon would be here in Generation Zero. Now, another thing to be said about the Iron Church is the Iron Church has very strong ties to Frederick Holberg. And Frederick Holberg is a motherfucker in this game. He has been doing a whole bunch of crazy shit in behind the scenes. He's survived this machine apocalypse, potentially was an originating start to the machine apocalypse verbatim. And... And honestly, I feel like Frederick Holberg might even be the real big bad of Generation Zero. Of course, we have to wait and see how the plot spans out, but I feel like there's something more to Frederick than what meets the eye with all of the documents that we've found so far. Now, I want to know what you guys think about all of this. What do you think about taking the Hunter's Vibra Swords and using them against them? What do you think about getting various different tiers of these Vibra Swords based on the tier of machine you're killing? And also, what do you guys think about the whole tie to the Iron Church? I, I really think that there is some grounded evidence here between the two buildings. And I feel like, as well on top of that, both buildings have the same kind of mysterious atmosphere around them that um, has, has enough of a similarity to say that this is not groundless to make the assumption that they are both tied together in some way, shape, or form. Now let's talk about the kerfuffle that's going on behind this door. I feel like uh, this potentially could be the sounds of NPCs here on the mainland. And uh, there are a couple NPCs that I think that this could be in particular. Uh, one of the things that you can hear throughout all of the ambient noise here is actually the sound of high heels clacking in the distance. Uh, or at least that's what I believe I'm hearing here. Uh, and so there are a number of female potential survivors of the entire robot apocalypse. The first of which being Veronica Nielsen. I really feel that Veronica Nielsen, just like Anita, is going to be making a reappearance in this game as the form of a NPC that we'll be encountering at some point and talking to and being given mission chains from and helping with some sort of objective or some sort of coalition just like the resistance off on Hemphall Island. Now, the next NPC that I think that this could potentially be is maybe Olga. She was the right-hand woman of, um, of Von Ulmer during his entire experimental process and is a very high-priority character in this game. Uh, so, whether or not Olga is dead is a little bit more difficult to ascertain than Veronica, but... Olga could potentially be the person behind this door as well. And lastly, 
the kind of more shot in the dark potential here is that that clacking is not high heels it's not any of the stuff that i'm thinking it is but maybe it's just the sounds of machines attacking in which case maybe the tie to the iron church is even stronger with this location and potentially in behind these doors we'll find some of frederick holberg's uh, kind of special forces themselves and we'll actually be able to talk with some Iron Church aficionados and <laughs> maybe maybe we'll be helping them out or maybe we'll be fighting against them uh, there is a lot of potential when it comes to uh, this actually being members of the Iron Church but I also feel like that's an even further shot in the dark because um, more than likely, the Iron Church is not going to be introduced into this game uh, in that sort of shape and form, or at least I don't feel it is. But, again, just like with the Vibra Sword, I want to know what you dudes think about this. Do you think that this is Veronica, Olga, the, uh, the Iron Church? Do you think it's somebody else, potentially? Let me know down in the comments. And that sound is significant as well. For all of you longtime players, I'm sure that you recognize that catbird thing. And that means that there might be a safe house here. This might potentially be some sort of safe house. Uh, and I, I think that that would be really, really cool. Uh, when you look at its location on the map here, in which case also if any of you guys are wondering where this is, you can find it just north of Durboslatin just up and along this kind of ridge formation here at the very far corner. Uh, this kind of like rabbit looking shape. Uh, so um, there really aren't any safe houses in this immediate location. The closest one is off at Stora Durbo and the other closest one is all the way across the river at Broskulla. So this would be a pretty decent location for a safe house to go because when you look at it, all the other safe houses around it are a bit of a jog away. And as well with the NPCs potentially being in here, uh, <laughs> there, there would be a strong reason for us to have a safe house to revisit this location and to come back to it. If we were given mission chains from this location itself, uh, then it would make sense that we would come back to this location in order to finish the mission chains if they were given from an NPC, the exact same way that it went off at Himfall Island. And the final spooky thing about this location is this weird gag set of glasses. <laughs> I don't know what this means, you know, like this is the most curious factor of this whole thing. And also possibly the thing that defeats this whole thing is that maybe this is just a gag. Maybe this is just some really weird and kind of twisted joke that one of the developers has put into the game in order to make guys like me go crazy. But, um... I don't know, man, I don't know. Or maybe this is something specific for getting into the base. Maybe the upper echelon of the members of the Iron Church all wear gag glasses. Who really knows, man? But there you guys have it. There are all of the ties that I can think of to Bunker 666. Are there any ties that you guys can think of? Have you noticed the word stick written on the walls in any other locations across the map? As always, let me know in the comments down below and let's start up having a conversation here. But one of the big things that I would like to say when it comes to locations like this is to take it with a big old grain of salt. Because in the end, locations like this are probably just work in progress assets that have managed to slip their way into the base game here. And just like with the bike race and just like with the uh, apocalypse vehicle and the gold 50 cal uh, that we found with the last month's update, this is potential to change and potential to be removed from the game. So uh, come over here, check it out while you have a chance because who knows, it might not be here come next month's update. Uh, but I think that if this sticks around, just like the Iron Church itself, uh, that this is going to have a serious amount of relevance to Generation Zero throughout the coming year. 
But anyway, there you guys go. There's my little think tank on Bunker 666. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys are hyped to figure out what the heck is going on here and what the heck is going on with Generation Zero's future. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, peace.